Yes, in the first place, the, the, the article says linguistic determinants in Igbo. Choral music or something. It doesn't say in Shona and the I'm talking of Igbo uh, uh, music. Uh, but the, 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 a major, a major problem is that people confuse tonality with pitch variation. I give examples of how in churches throughout the world, if you sing a hymn in the key of F, for example, F major, and you start it, and the hymn has five stanzas. Give the chord in the first stanza, and they started in the key of F major. If you don't accompany that with an organ or some other instrument of definite pitch, by the time they get to the fifth stanza, that hymn is now in G or A flat. Because people do not pitch properly. They vary. I take delight in my t teaching of choral music, in showing, demonstrating to people that there are up to eight different microtones within a semitone, at least within a tone, four between uh, a note and one, a semitone above it. And I demonstrated by showing little increases in uh, frequency which raises the pitch slightly, but you may not notice it until you strike the fourth or fifth one, and you know that there is a change in pitch. Scholarship has shown that it, at about 1,000 cycles per second, it takes a variation of at, three, at least three cycles per second for anybody to perceive a, a change in pitch. So this, People don't even hear uh, microtones. And that's why many choirs don't sing in tune, because the conductor himself does not hear the difference in pitch. Uh, so when people have varieties of pitching because of human frailties and failures, they think that tones, that scales have changed. Not necessarily. They may not have changed, but humans do not pitch exactly on every note. Um, listen to any girl sweeping the, uh, the compound. She starts her song. Um, are, uh, uh, let, uh, how shall I? Agameje ahiatata, Agameje ahiatata, Agameje ahiatata. It keeps raising in pitch and pitch and pitch. And she gets to Agameje Ahiatata, Kazutaranami Hogari, Agameje Ahiatata, Agameje Hogari, Agameje After that, he starts with Agameje Ahiatata. He comes down a pitch because he's gradually raised the pitch without knowing. If you listen to a Gedege music uh, uh, by Teresa of Unumbi and others, they use a, a penny whistle a sort of flute to play the tune. When the voice comes and the flute stops, the voice sings and sings and sings. When the flute comes back, you find that the pitch is different. They've raised the singing by at least a semitone. So the pitch now, the flute now comes at the exact tone where it began and there's a, a, a difference, there's a difference in, in tune. So people who think that there's a variety 
in terms of skill may not be aware that it's just the human frailty of not keeping to the exact pitch where they began, but going slightly higher and higher and higher, and higher without knowing. So that's uh, 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 one point about that. So, um, and as I said, I talked about Igbo music. You have to know what the intended tone is. Not the exact recording of what was made by a group. Uh, their exact recording may vary uh, from the same group in each performance, and, uh, and not from group to, to, to group. Uh, so what is the intention? And by a perceptible hearing experience, for, uh, uh, M. Joe says that you, you cannot uh, uh, nobody can transcribe, or is it you trace it down? Uh, uh, African music is popular unless he has a good set of tuning forks. Well, that's because he is basing his judgment on the output, not on the intention. It is only when you know the intention, even though you can decipher that intention from the output, but you must know what the original scale is intended to be before you can make an accurate notation of it, not just recording the output. Even from the same group, it will vary from uh, place to place, from time to time, from even among the same group, depending on the circumstances, the pitch, uh, the acoustics, the environment, and uh, so many other variables. Uh, so it is difficult to say uh, uh, the pitch is not determined uh, by this. It is, uh, there's no fixed pitch. Well, I'm not going to agree about that, but the facts are that there are certain quality, musical properties, there are certain linguistic properties that determine the musical demands. Of course, music allows you to vary uh, uh, the poetic license, so that you do not have to follow that predetermined condition. You can change. For example, um, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make up. You can change the thing. You have poetic liberty to vary that thing. But it does not mean that language does not determine what the pitch should be. So it is how much theoretical knowledge does the person have? How much perception acoustically does the person have? How much tuning and temperament quality. Does you have to know what is intended to be from what actually is the result? Why do people go sharp when they sing or flat? That is not the intention. It is their inability to do that. And if you take someone singing flat and say, ah, that is the scale of the song, that is, then you're totally wrong. All right, I hope that uh, explains that.